Hey there, look what I've got. I've got some flaming Hot Cheetos in a mug. They are good in a mug, they sure are. And what we're gonna do in this experiment is try to find out how much energy is in each amount of food and fuel. Your food is your fuel. Please make sure that you have a copy of the assignment, Energy in Fuel and Food. What we're going to do is go through a demonstration where I will collect data in the first part of the experiment using a candle and then I will do the same procedures to find out the energy that's in some food using the flame and hots. So I'll start with the hot flame and then the flame and hots. Now if you already have data of your own and you're watching this because you want to know how to do the calculations, then when you uh, see what I do with my data, you can do the same thing with yours. If you don't have data of your own, you can use these data. I'm going to go through this rather quickly so you'll probably want to pause and rewind as you go along. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to start with part one, energy in fuel. I have a calorimeter here made from an open can and I'm going to light a candle and try to trap as much of the heat in the can as I can. Now since this is an open calorimeter, a lot of the heat that I'm trying to measure is going to get lost to the room. So I know that the results are going to be rather inaccurate. But if I know how inaccurate the results are from this part of the experiment, then I can compensate for that when I do the other part of the experiment. So I'm going to start by taking my candle here in this foil cup. I'm going to find its mass on the balance. And I'm also going to find the starting temperature of my calorimeter. And then I'm going to light up my fire. And I'm going to move the can down to try to get as much of the heat into the can as I can without putting out the flame. And I'm going to let the temperature go up for a while. Now over here on the other side, I'm going to do the same thing with a flame and hot in my tin. I'm going to find the mass and the starting temperature of my calorimeter. And then I'm going to burn this Cheeto. And let me burn that here. I'm going to try to get as much of the heat from this uh, combustion reaction into the can as I can. Now, when I'm all done burning these materials, what I'll do is I'll reweigh the burned materials to find out how much of that material uh, was used to make the heat that I'm trapping in the calorimeters. I'll measure the ending temperature in the calorimeters and I'll use that data to calculate how much heat was released by each amount of mass of material that burned. I'll show you those calculations next. Okay, I'm going to show you the data that I recorded in my demonstration. I started with the foil uh, baking cup and the candle, which was 11.45 grams. And the starting temperature of my calorimeter was 21.3 degrees Celsius. I heated it up until it reached a high temperature of 41.2 degrees. I didn't uh, wait for it to go up 30 whole degrees, I just stopped. And uh, that meant that the temperature changed 19.9 degrees Celsius. The ending mass of the uh, candle was 11.30 and I subtracted to find out how much candle burned and it's 0.15 grams. Now I'm going to use colors to represent the materials that were changing. The green is going to be the uh, fuel that burned and red and blue are going to represent the water and the can. Since both of them were uh, heating together, I'm going to use both colors to represent both materials. Let's move these data onto the data diagram so that we can keep track of what it was that we did. So the starting temperature of my calorimeter is 21.3 degrees Celsius and the ending temperature 41.2 degrees Celsius a temperature change of 19.9 degrees Celsius. And I'm keeping track that these are both materials, the water and the can. So I'm using both colors to represent both materials. Now we need to know some things about the can and the water. I found the mass of 10 cans and averaged them so that we could use this mass 
to represent the mass of the cans, 9.40 grams. The specific heat of the aluminum that the cans is made of, are made of is 0.91 joules per gram degree Celsius. So you can record those data too. The water, the mass of the water that was in the calorimeter was 50.0 grams and water has a specific heat capacity of 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. So you can add those data as well. The first calculations that we're going to do are to find out how much heat from the candle went into the can and the water. We have to calculate these separately because they're separate materials, but then we'll add them together in the end so we can get the total amount of heat that was exchanged between the candle and the materials that make up the calorimeter. So to calculate the heat that the can got from the candle, I'll use data that are all about the can. So I need to know the specific heat of the can, 0.91 joules per gram degree Celsius. I need to know the mass of the can, 9.40 grams. And I need to know the temperature change of the can, 19.9 degrees Celsius. The temperature change in the can is the same as the temperature change in the water. If I multiply those together, the calculator will tell me that this is the answer, 170.2246. If I rounded that to two significant figures, it would be 170 joules. That's how much heat energy was absorbed by just the aluminum in the can. I'll do a similar calculation for the water, this time using data about the water. So to calculate the heat that the water gained, I need to know the specific heat of the water, 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. I need to know the mass of the water, 50.0 grams. And I need to know the temperature change of the water. That's the temperature change of the calorimeter, 19.9 degrees Celsius. If I multiply these three together, the answer that I get is 4163.08. And if I round that to three significant figures, it will be 4160 joules. Together, the amount of heat that was exchanged was 170 joules plus 4160 joules, and that equals 4330 joules of heat altogether. Now where that heat came from was from the candle that was burned. How much heat came from each gram of candle? So I'll take the heat total, 4330 joules, and I'll divide that by how much candle burned. The amount of candle that burned was 0.15 grams, and if I divide that, the calculator says the answer is 28866.66 repeating. If I round that to two significant figures, it's 29000 joules for each gram of candle that burned. So when the candle burned, it released heat to the calorimeter. Each gram of candle that burned released this many joules. However, the amount that we expect is much higher. The amount of energy in each gram of candle paraffin is a known quantity. It's supposed to be 42,000 joules per gram. That's what we expect it to be. And our results are considerably lower. And the reason is because the heat from the candle is not all going into the calorimeter. Some of it is, but a lot of it is going out into the room and we can't measure that heat so the result that we get is lower than what we expect it to be. Well, that's not you know, a very accurate result, but since we know that we were lower than we needed to be, in our next part of the experiment, we can, we can compensate for that by doing a calculation uh, to make a correction factor. It's just like if you shoot an arrow at a target and you come up short, you know the next time how much harder to pull back on the bow or how much higher to aim. We'll use that kind of idea to correct the results in the next part of the experiment. So in the next part of the experiment, uh, when we burn the Cheeto, these were the data that I collected. My Cheeto in the aluminum cup weighed 2.84 grams, and the starting temperature of my calorimeter was 20.6 degrees Celsius. I burned the Cheeto and the temperature went up to 98.7 degrees, 
for a temperature change of 78.1 degrees Celsius. When I re-weighed my Cheeto, it only weighed 1.88 grams because 0.96 grams of that material were burned away. We want to find out how much energy was in those 0.96 grams of Cheeto. So just like before, I'm going to take my data here and I'm going to represent them in the data diagram. So I started at a temperature of 20.6 degrees Celsius and the temperature went up to 98.7 degrees Celsius for a change of 78.1 degrees Celsius. And as before, I'm going to keep track of the materials that I'm using by using these colors. The mass of the can, it's the same can that we used before. So the mass was 9.40 grams. The specific heat is the same as before because it's still aluminum, 0.91 joules per gram degree Celsius. The mass of the water is still 50.0 grams. And the specific heat is still 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. And like we did before, we'll use the materials to find out the amount of heat that was uh, absorbed by the can, the amount of heat that was absorbed by the water, and then we'll add those together to find out the total amount of heat that came from the burned Cheeto. So to calculate the heat absorbed by the can, I'll use the specific heat of the can, 0 0.91 times the mass of the can, 9.40 times the temperature change, 78.1 degrees Celsius. If you do the math, calculator says 668.0674. Let's round that to two significant figures, 670 joules. That's how much energy was absorbed just by the aluminum part of the calorimeter. For the water, I'll do the same calculation. The specific heat of the water, 4.184. The mass of the water, 50.0. And the temperature change in the water. The calculator says when you multiply these, you get 16,338.52. I'm going to round that to three significant figures 16300 joules. Altogether, the heat was 670 joules plus. 16,300 joules and that comes up to 16,970 joules of heat from the amount of mass that burned. So let's find out what the fuel value was. We'll divide how many joules of heat came out of the Cheeto when it was burned by how many grams of the Cheeto burned. So we'll divide by 0 0.96, that's how many grams of Cheeto burned. The calculator says 17677.08333. If I rounded that to two significant figures, it would be 18,000 joules for each gram of Cheeto. Now that result is probably less than it should be because just as we found before when we did the candle analysis, the candle did not uh, we did not catch as much heat from the candle as we expected. So this answer is probably just as wrong as the other one. But since we know how wrong the other one was, we can do a calculation to correct for the inaccuracy in our analysis so far. So here's how we do that. We're going to set up a proportion. We're going to take the result that we expected in part one with the candle. We expected that each gram of candle paraffin would have 42,000 joules for each gram of candle paraffin. But what we observed was only 29,000. So it came up short. But we're going to set that in proportion to the part two results with the Cheeto. What we observed for the Cheeto was 18,000 joules per gram degree Celsius. Now just like what we observed here was less than we expected, what we observed here 
is also less probably than what we would expect if we had a more accurate result. So to find out what the missing value is in this proportion, what we'll do is we'll cross multiply and divide to find the missing value. If you cross multiply and divide and round to two significant figures, you get 26,000 joules per gram. So the corrected the correct answer is to our wrong answer. What this correct answer is to our wrong answer. Our answers that we found by analysis are lower than expected, so this one is probably just as uh, as off as the other one was. So we're correcting for that for that lack of uh, accuracy in our result. So that's how many joules there were in each gram of the uh, Cheeto. But you know, when you look at a bag of Cheetos, you don't see joules, you see calories listed. You see calories with a capital C, those are kilocalories. Let's see how many kilocalories there are in a serving of Cheetos. If you ate uh, what it says on the bag is a serving. So we're going to take those joules per gram and we're going to multiply by a conversion. There are this many kilocalories in each joule of energy. So I'm going to multiply by 0, 0, 0, 2, 3, 9 calories per joule. And when you do the math, you come out to 6.2 and uh, the joules cancel out so we get calories per gram. Each gram of Cheeto that burned has 6.2 kilocalories. So how many calories, kilocalories, would be in a serving? There are 28 grams in one serving of Cheetos according to the bag. So if this is how much there was in just one gram, if I multiply that by 28, that will tell me how many there are in the whole bag, or the whole serving. 6.2 calories per gram times 28 grams equals, and if I round it to two significant figures, 170 calories per serving. If you look at the label on a bag of Cheetos, it says that one serving is 28 grams and it has 170 calories in it. So that's a dead-on result. But our result wouldn't have come out so, uh, so close to this if we had used the uncorrected value that we got from our original analysis. We had to correct for the lack of accuracy by comparing our results to what we expect to get in the first part of the experiment. And if we had used 18,000 joules per gram, then we would have gotten a smaller number of calories per gram, and we would have had a smaller number of calories per serving in our final answer. The last part of the activity asks you to analyze the design of a real calorimeter, and you should think about how the design of the calorimeter that we used causes a lack of accuracy. Remember that like when we heat the Cheeto, some of that heat is going out into the room. Only a fraction of it gets up into the calorimeter. Look at the design of the calorimeter that's in the picture and see if you can find out what makes its design so much more accurate than ours.